Climate change is one of the world's biggest challenges. Countries are suffering from landslides, floods, scorching effect of the sun, and other hazards. Mount Elgon ecosystem is vulnerable to climatic change impacts with worst being landslides. In March 2010, following heavy rains, landslides killed hundreds of people, destroyed homes, covered schools and hospitals. <laughs> One year later, landslides struck Blambuli district. 23 lives were lost, houses and crops destroyed in the poor district. Getting solution to climatic hazards is by adopting ecosystem-based adaptation, EBA strategies. Experts believe that there is an urgent need to develop an overall strategy to help people adapt to the effects of climatic change. Many people stay there and they are so crowded, they cultivate and often when it rains, there is a landslide. Water which comes from there comes down here. And again here is flooded. So you have, you have floods, you have uh, mud grounds and so forth. So you find sometimes the, the, the roads are impassable. You can't do anything. Communities in these areas depend on ecosystem for livelihood. Landscape provides water for agriculture and human use. But there is poor settlement planning deforestation and undercutting of slopes for construction of homesteads, thus reducing the ability of the ecosystem to provide critical ecosystem services on which local livelihoods depend, including provision of fresh water. Local administration in Mount Elgon districts of Queen, Kapchorua and Bulambuli, as well as national government try to control these by helping people harmoniously adapt to the environment they are living in amid budget constraints. We budget for environment, although we are constrained in terms of finances. Uh, sustaining uh, uh, ecosystem issues is very expensive and uh, although we plan but we are limited by the funds. Yeah, it is really good to budget but most often the priority of the, the local government is not that. And two, the the money we get is so meager that issues of floods, issues of landslide, which need a lot of money, are not addressed. That's where the problem is. Local people here are trying to adapt to the environmental hazard they are living in. They practice economic activities such as beekeeping to earn a living and aiding them from over-dependence on natural resources. There are also credit facilities provided for them in supporting commercial nursery bed establishment and maintenance to encourage afforestation. Funds are located by the central government to mitigate these effects are not adequate. The money that is sent from the centre is not enough. And then this money is directly, has been already allocated. If it is for water, it goes only for water. If it is for a school, it goes for a school. For health, it is for health. So we don't have enough money. Uh, the money we get from government towards supporting environment is not enough. Uh, we get an average of five million a year, which is a drop in the ocean. Although we have uh, support in, uh, under the program of PRDP, which also uh, comes to about eight million. Sustainable management, conservation, and restoration activities are needed in these areas. They include reforestation, regulating hydrology, construction of terraces, sustainable water management, and restoration of upland watersheds to reduce the risk of flooding, restoration of wetlands from protection against floods, maintaining corridors of natural vegetation along rivers to reduce irritation that causes flooding. Other adaptation strategies needed include beekeeping, bridge construction for easy transport, and nursery bed for commercial purposes to encourage afforestation. These are long-term activities that require national budget incorporation. What is, what is provided in the national budget for environment and natural resources is 1%, and that's not sufficient to handle the magnitude of the climate change issues. So we're appealing to government 
and other uh, development partners and stakeholders to increase uh, the contribution to environment and natural resources. Integration of EBA into budgeting and policy process is therefore essential to deliver cross-sectoral ecosystem scale adaptation interventions. The opportunities available include the government budget finance processes that can be uh, used to integrate ecosystem-based adaptation into public finance and policy processes. These include the writing of annual uh, budget framework papers, the ministerial statements in which ecosystem-based adaptation can be integrated into the finance framework and policy processes. The EBA process, first of all, is, is a pilot. And uh, the pilot is helping us to, to, to understand what the situation is on the ground, what are the challenges. We, we are looking at adaptation. It has, for example, developed the vulnerability impact assessment. That is an important tool that is going to help us to scale up that into other ecosystems that are similar, like the Renzolis and the other mountain ecosystems. The opportunities include research and development uh, where government can directly support um, the research activities by improving, increasing uh, budgetary expenditures in these um, areas. Also, the uh, government can adapt the green uh, procurement activities, uh, which include uh, promoting activities that directly uh, influence uh, environment. For instance, uh, promoting tree planting and uh, river bank plantations in mountain ecosystem regions can directly influence the climate and the environment uh, in which the communities live. The ecosystem-based adaptation EBA strategies sources alternative livelihood that builds on ecosystem management. They include micro-enterprise potential, access markets and secure income for improved livelihood portfolios to prepare for and respond to climatic change shocks.